again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this video I want to talk a little bit about scales and particularly how we play scales and the idea of scale boxes. So when you first get into like music theory and wanting to like learn how to play music if you like properly and using scales and applying music theory. So your starting point is the idea of finding notes from a scale and a pattern for where those those notes fall on the neck. And for, get into what we call like a scale box pattern you know something that looks like this is the pattern for a major scale so we'd if i start teaching somebody like theory based guitar and we're getting into learning scales that's probably the sort of shape i'm going to start off with it's a really useful shape <laughs> From an introductory point of view, because you're starting off with the, the root note of the scale, like, like at the start on the bass string, on the bottom string there, you're using all four fingers. It's one of those shapes where the way the notes fall on the fingerboard. It's a good finger exercise because you're using all four fingers across the, the different frets to play the notes of the scale. And that becomes sort of like your, your, your first sort of like scale box that you learn for the major scale. People will tell you, oh, you, you shouldn't just stick with the scale boxes as you become an advanced guitarist you need to kind of break out of the box don't don't get locked into the box you've got to explore where the notes are on the fingerboard now that's true but what i'm going to talk about in this video is the idea of still having an idea of where scale boxes are and and so on because they do still play a part in your guitar playing even as you get more advanced in a good example i was watching something on youtube the other day guitar player can't remember who it was. I was watching loads of guitar stuff on, on YouTube. Um, but it was somebody playing live and went into a solo. And at one point, not only did I recognise the notes of the scale that he was playing, just you kind of, you know, by the sound of it, but where the, his fingers were on the fingerboard, it was, yes, yeah, a bog standard position one minor pentatonic box. That box was still relevant to that well-established, very experienced, very proficient guitar player as much as it was relevant to a, a beginner because the notes of the scale still apply. So where do we kind of still have relevance with scale boxes while being able to explore the fingerboard? Well, if you use the scale box, like say, uh, sticking with that major scale example, you've got a, a space of four frets where the notes of the scale fall. And you could use that and you can play all sorts of different things. But as you start to use techniques, maybe like sliding or like more you know, techniques where you want to go, you're moving out of the box. And now you're in a different position on the neck and you need to know where the notes of the scale are. You're outside of the scale box, but because of the way the guitar works, the notes of that scale are still there. So this is why you still need to know your fingerboard. You need to know where the notes are on the, on the neck, right the way across the neck, not just within like a four, a four fret box. But if you know your modes, getting a little bit more advanced now, you'll know that modes are inversions of scales. So if you think about major scale theory, you've got a major scale starting on a root position like this. <laughs> But there's also a box, if I start, say, on the second degree, it's a box that looks like this. That's technically the Dorian mode because it's the notes of the major scale arranged from the second degree. If you're not into modal theory, don't worry about it too much. Just if you understand the notes of the, where the notes are on the fingerboard, you know, these are the notes of the A major scale that I'm playing there moving and playing the second box these are the notes that are involved it's the, still the notes of the a major scale they're just arranged differently it happens to be starting from a b root note rather than an a root note and if you look at a tool like this is where fatfish is really useful this is why i wrote and this is why i developed fatfish is to help you find all the the, the different notes of scales across the fingerboard and if you you just dial in a scale like a major you can find notes around one region of the neck, then move to another region of the neck and look for the same notes. And you can, you can start to pick out patterns that you can, you can play that are within one region, like box patterns. 
So you're not just tied into that, that one place where you're playing A major. There's a scale box around about here. There's a scale box around about here and so on and so on up and down the neck. And you can think about the idea of starting off in one position on the neck using one scale box. And as you move around, you're actually moving from one box to another and taking notes from the same scale, but using a different box pattern. You know, something like this. Yeah, something like that. I'm moving from one scale box to another, to another. In reality, what I'm actually doing is I'm just using the entire fretboard, all the notes from the scale that are laid out and, and, uh, and on the fingerboard for me to use, but kind of organizing them in terms of I'm in this box, or I'm in this box, or I'm in this box. So it's useful to learn not just that, that root position pattern where the lowest note, on the, the, the note on the bottom, bottom string is the root, but think about being able to move to different patterns as, as I say, a tool like Fat Fish is really, really useful for that. And that's a sort of a starting point to get you beyond just that one box you can kind of move around the fingerboard. Now, as you get really proficient and you're thinking really in terms of intervals between notes rather than just box patterns, you will truly start to break out of, break out of the boxes and you're just moving freely around the neck from one, one note to another not thinking in box patterns that's it's all part of how you uh, how you develop as a guitar player there's nothing wrong about using boxes but as you get more proficient you just kind of you you, you get a bit more creative but with this even for the most advanced guitar player there's still a, a role for boxes consciously you know the idea the idea of right i'm playing all over the neck but i'm going to go back and play in a box and you can think of using boxes as like your escape route if you are playing something you're just improvising away your you're 30 odd bars into a 48 bar solo you're playing in one key you're suddenly at the top of the neck and your creativity starts to run out of steam it's like oh my god where am i where am i going to go from here i don't want to lose the flow of the piece but i need to stop i need to think because you should be familiar with the scale boxes, they kind of become your, if you like, your safe space. Now, if I'm playing in the key of, say, A natural minor, you know, I've got an A natural minor box that I know really well around here. Or even A minor pentatonic. Now, if I suddenly find myself up here, up, up around the 12th fret, 15th fret, something like that, it's like, oh, right, I've completely lost my place. I just need some thinking time. What I'll probably do is just think, I'll just work my way back to that box and play something that I'm familiar with. Now, if I'm up here, say around the 12th fret, I could just play a pattern, just taking notes from the scale to get myself back down here to the fifth fret, you know. And I'm back into that scale box. And what that allows me to do is I can keep the improvisation going. So it's not about being somewhere unfamiliar and then just going back to a, a lick or a pattern that you know really well. You could still keep the improvisation going and be playing you know, patterns that you've never played before because you're taking notes from scale, which is what you know improvising and, and soloing is. But you're going back to a scale box and scale pattern that you're very, very familiar with and you can just kind of find your way around. So yes, scale boxes definitely have a, a role to play for uh, a more experienced guitar player. So don't th th think you need to stop using them and don't be dismissive of people who use scale box patterns. They are still incredibly relevant. Now, I mentioned Fatfish a couple of times. I would certainly recommend that you spend some time with Fatfish learning different scale patterns and finding scale patterns that work for you. Uh, you know, I use the example of the major scale, you know, the, the pattern that looks like this, where you've got a nice comfortable spread of your fingers, one finger per fret. You might want to look at some other patterns where you've got, say, strict three notes per string pattern. You know, so for like a major scale, you could have something that looks like this. Yeah, or there's a really interesting pattern for a natural minor. It looks a bit like this. Little 
things like that. The things that you can play um, with certain like regularity so like say say three notes per string or looking for the same pattern of notes across multiple strings it's 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 efficient to play you can kind of lock it in between your left hand and your right hand really really nicely there's loads of different combinations of notes as you will see when you use something like fatfish experiment get familiar with the fingerboard but like i said don't be um afraid to use scale boxes and say my i think my number one takeaway for you from this video is the idea of ha having a scale box that you're familiar with and using it as an escape route if you get somewhere unfamiliar on the neck just get yourself back down to a box that you know just by just like just playing a little pattern down one string of notes from the scale get yourself back to where you're comfortable and then you can just continue the solo you can continue improvising now, if you watch any of the videos that I put in here where I'm jamming, you will occasionally see me doing things like that, you know, the going down the neck just on one string. That sort of thing. Am I doing that intentionally because I want that effect of going down the string, or am I doing it because I'm using it, using it as an escape route to get back to somewhere I'm comfortable with? To be honest, you can't tell, which means if you do that yourself, the person watching you won't know if you're doing it because you're doing it creatively or you're doing it just to get yourself back to a safe a safe place. So don't be afraid of doing that. No, no one's going to judge you. Okay, so hopefully that's given you some food for thought. And as I say, if you haven't got a copy of Fatfish, it's available to download on the Fatfish website. Links in the information section down there. It's free to use. Um, all I ask you to do is register and uh, let me know that you're using it. And if you want to give me a donation, you can, but there's absolutely no obligation. And hopefully it will open up the fingerboard for you and help you to explore uh, where the scales are on, on the guitar. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click like down there if you really enjoyed it and you want to see other videos that are posted on the channel. And please click subscribe, which is also down there. And next to the subscribe button, there's a bell icon. Click on that and you'll be notified anytime I upload any new videos onto the channel. You're welcome to leave a comment. I don't always see comments left on videos, so if there's something specific that you want to ask me, whether it's about guitar playing, music theory, guitar equipment, anything at all, you're better off going here, fill that form in, send your question in, that way I'm guaranteed to see it, and I can get around to answering it in a future video. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.